everyone keeps telling me to learn Swift. They're telling me, they're promising me that it's the better version of Rust. Okay, I keep hearing this, that it's like the greatest. And every, I, I, I can't believe it. I have a hard time believing it. Taylor Swift 5.9 has been released. Are you ready? We're going to look at what they've done, and we're going to try to make some judgments about a language I have literally never touched in my lifetime, okay? Swift 5.9 is now available. This is a major new release that adds expressive macro system to the language and introduces support for integrating Swift into C++ code bases through bidirectional interoperability. Okay? They've already beat Rust. Boom. 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 They're already better. Okay? They got, they got macros. They got bidirectional. Um, it introduces uh, parameter packs, uh, an improved expression evaluator while debugging, enhanced crash handling, Windows platform improvements, and more. What's, what? What is this last one? What's Windows? I thought Windows was for gaming. Is Swift for game development? I don't know what that is. Read on for a deep dive into the changes to the language standard library tooling platform support next steps to get started. Okay, yeah. Language and standard library. Swift's fundamental goal is to encourage code that is clear and concise while remaining safe and efficient. All right. All right, let's see it. Macros. Macros help developers reduce repetitive boilerplate and create more expressive libraries that can be distributed as Swift packages. Using a macro is easy and natural. No one has ever said this sentence I have ever heard of in my entire lifetime. Nobody. Nobody says this. Nobody says this. Why is this sounding like Rust? Because apparently it's like Rust, okay? Macros can either be expanded with a function like a freestanding macro name syntax, okay? Let font equals front literal name SF mono size 14 regular, okay? Or attached declarations with macro name attribute, okay? Very, okay, so we're looking a lot like kind of Rusty Rust right here, right? You can either inline call them or what looks to be like more of a procedural one. Okay, they work just like built-in language features, but can't be mistaken for normal code. Okay, fair. You write macros using a powerful and flexible approach. They are simply Swift functions that use Swift syntax library to generate code to be inserted in the source file. This literally sounds just like Rust, except for Rust uses sin, right? It just uses sin instead of the Swift syntax. Uh, macros can uh, make it easy for your libraries, uh, libraries users to adopt powerful capabilities that adapt the code uh, they are used in. In the new Observer Observation module, which allows Swift classes to automatically notify other code when properties change, the Swift community has been hard at work for creating these tools and frameworks that built upon macros. For example, look at the Swift Power Assert. Okay, a lot of cool stuff right there. I would like... I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm happy that they did this. I don't mind the syntax either, right? Pound me function or uh, what appears to be a decorator. Like, these don't bother me. I don't think they really bother me that this exists, right? Is anyone actually bothered by these kind of things? It's more of just like learning the stuff. I think with static Hermes, React is fine for native. Oh, we're, we're way off. Uh, if, it, if the generated code has problems, do I get to play the game of whack-a-mole uh, in my ID and debugger trying to see if the... Yeah, so, so that's the thing is that one thing Rust really does well is it does have cargo expand. So you can literally just call cargo expand and it will show you your source code generated from macros. So you can kind of see what you messed up, what you didn't mess up. I do like that. So long as they offer that, it does make macro development less hard. But I... I still think Zig is the best in this category. Zig allows comp time, right? You just write Zig, and you say this is ran during compile time, and it just it, you don't need a degree in astrophysics to figure this out. Like you just write Zig, right? Comp time is potentially the greatest macro-like system of all time. It never surprises me ever that when you say the term comp comp time. At least one person says come time. One person forever says come time. Every single time. Every single time, hands down, no matter what, it just happens. And now everybody's going to say come time. Get out of here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, parameter packs let you write generic types and functions which will work over arbitrary number of types. Okay, for example, without parameter packs, if you want to write a function call all to check whether any number of optional values are nil, you would need to write separate overloaded for each length. Yes, we've seen this with, okay. Oh, this could be cool. Oh, what are we about to see? With parameter packs, you can, exp because like right now, one thing uh, with, uh, what's it called, like Axum or Actix, they're, 
super special syntax magic of being able to take handler functions and transform the data of the request into your struct without you doing anything other than deriving serde is all done, but they can do up to nine arguments. This is saying you could just do any amount of arguments. With parameter packs, you can express this API as a single function that has no upper limit, allowing you to pass any number of arguments. All right, all each wrapped, optional, repeat each wrapped, I don't know what the question mark is, repeat each wrapped, and you can return each one. Okay, okay. Calling an API that uses parameter packs is intuitive and requires no extra work. All right, if let, I mean, does this already look, does this already look like we're dealing with a little bit of rust? If let this, optional int, optional double, optional, oh, yes. Oh, that is so good. I don't want to like Swift. I refuse to like Swift. I refuse to like Swift. I refuse to like it. But that is really good. Oh, shit. I, I'm going to be a Taylor Swifty, aren't I? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to do it. Uh... If I, if, if I only knew one Taylor Swift song, I could I could actually repeat it right now, but I can't even do that. I feel like a failure. Um, ownership features can help developers fine-tune a memory management behavior in performance-critical code. The new consume operator tells Swift to deinitialize a variable and transfer its contents without copying it. The consume and borrow parameters modifying uh, provide hints that Swift... Uh, can use and eliminate unnecessary copying and reference counting operations. No way. This is like OCaml. They're even going with OCaml style now, too. Oh, no. I am an Apple fanboy all of a sudden. This actually sounds like this sounds like the perfect language. Okay, because I've always just wanted two things. I want a garbage collector for when I don't care. And I want the ability to do borrow checking and all the fancy ownership transfer when I do care. OCaml... Like, OCaml effectively has that. And now Swift is coming in here? Swift just allows it finally non-copyable structs and enums allow you to create types which, like a class, can't be meaningful co meaningfully, co meaningfully copied when assigned. Like a struct or an enum, you do, not need to, uh, you do not need to be reference counted because only one storage location can own the instance at a time. I mean, that sounds actually really good. Swift 5. Point, this actually sounds incredible. Status bar text. If not has connection, disconnected. Uh, else if let error equals. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, I like that. Uh, else ready. Okay, I like this. Additional features uh, include smaller quality of life changes to the language, like the ability to use if and switch expressions uh, for variable assignment. Love it. Love that. This is great. This is great. Because I don't love ternaries, and you can't really do if else in ternaries. They just get totally effed up. Right? People try to do if else's by chaining a couple ternaries. This is nice. I don't see Swift and Mason. Uh, that's fine. It's pretty easy to get your own LSP in. Uh, a new package access level lets other modules in the same package access APIs, but hide them from code outside the package. Oh, like the default scope in Java. It's great for splitting up large modules into several smaller ones without exposing internals. Okay, cool. Like that. I like that. Uh, developers using Swift concurrency may appreciate the more convenient discarding task group types for task groups that don't generate results and advanced custom actor executors features for controlling the exact environment in which actors run. Okay. Okay. Crash handling. Apparently on Linux, the Swift runtime can now, uh, will now catch program crashes and Swift runtime errors and display backtraces on the program's output. Okay, good. That's nice. Backtracer is out of process and includes support for async functions. All right. Awesome. I like to hear it. This feature is also available on Mac OS, but is disabled by default to enable it. You need to do it. Of course, of course, because it, of course, it's always inconvenient. Debugging it introduces a, uh, features to the LLDB and Swift compiler aimed at making Swift debugging faster and more reliable. The PNPO commands uh, now print local variables and properties as fast as the frame variable or V commands by bypassing the Swift compiler when evaluating simple expressions. Okay, cool stuff. Let's just move on. Just Little, little little niceties, nice niceties. Good, I like that. Uh, now supports bidirectional interoperability uh, for C plus plus and Objective C plus. What the hell's Objective C plus plus? Wait, hold on. I thought it was just Objective C. There's Objective C plus plus. Is that real? I mean, I've done a I've done a decent amount of Objective C. What the hell is Objective C plus plus? What the hell is even that? I I have done. 
a pretty decent amount of Objective C, which, by the way, worst language I've ever used. I hated it. I had to program an Xcode. It was January. It was genuinely objectively ass. Yeah, it was awful. All right, five nine supports bidirectional interoperability. For example, we can do this one. C uh, Clang module prompt responder. Okay, we get a little pragma once, baby. Include this vector. Generate responses. Uh, okay, you can call it directly from Swift code. Uh, generate responses. Oh, I wonder how the compiling looks on this. I wonder how you set these two things together because this looks nice. I mean, that's kind of incredible. Can we agree? Like, if this is really true, you just like do the thing. Get it? That'd be wild. That would be wild. Uh, C++ interoperability is actively evolving with some aspects uh, subject to change in the future releases as the community gathers feedback from the real world adoption and mixed uh, Swift and C++ code bases. Uh, for information on... So again, this is where Z I still think Zig might be the better choice, but now I'm curious. Now I'm actually genuinely curious. How, how good is Swift? Uh, for information on enabling C++ interoperability in this uh, lang uh, supported language subset, please refer to the documentation. Uh, really, what I want to see out of Swift is... How easy is it to do servers, right? How easy is it to just launch a server and do templating of HTML? That's what I want to see. Can I launch servers? Can I do templating of HTML? And can we call it a day? Or is it going to be a pain in the ass? Because right now, I'm not loving Rust for that. Rust, the best way to, to do this, the single best way to do it in Rust is to use Leptos. Honestly, I can't find a better way to use it. Okay. I think this is literally the best way to do HTML templating in Rust is using Leptos. I think Greg was always right. Look at this. Look at that beauty I did right here. Look at how beautiful this is. But nonetheless, I think Greg is 100% right. Leptos is it, it, great. But Go, Go has it naturally supported, so it feels so good, right? It feels so good. I prefer so the, the problem I have with templating languages in Rust like Leptos, is that it allows you to be too complicated by accident, right? And so Swift, on the other hand, if they just have a nice templating language, one that just allows your basic templating and top-down thinking to happen, that'd be fantastic. All right. A Swift package uh, manager. Okay, nice. They have their own package manager. Awesome. So Swift is like a fully, func a fully functioning modern language. Package manager, build tools, debugging, all under one roof. Fantastic. Packages can be used, uh, can use the new package access modifier, allowing the access of symbols in another target slash module within the same package without making them public. Swift PM automatically sets the new compiler configuration to ensure, okay, cool. Compiler plugin support uh, uh, enables defining macro targets. Macro targets allow authoring and distributing custom Swift macros. Okay, interesting. So they just have a bunch of cool stuff. None of the stuff really, I think, largely matters to me. This is how you write the... Um, the macros, awesome. Okay, cool. Server, okay, yes. Custom actor executors and other features from Swift 5.9 are making their way into Swift on the server ecosystem. The server work group also recently published their annual update. Okay, details plans for increased uh, adoption of concurrency with key libraries as well as other efforts. Nice. Nobody cares about Windows platform. All right, next steps. This is how we use it. Okay, so Swift looks good. I think I'd like to just try Swift for a, like a week or two just to find out, is it actually great or is it not? Because, I, like I said, I'm still looking for something that's like Go, but with more of a type system like Rust. You know what I mean? I want that, I want that swift, easy development of Go and just the amazing standard. See, they've kind of went the opposite route as Rust. Rust says we're not going to do anything in the standard. You're just going to always use the ecosystem. And Go's like, no, we'll give you an amazing standard. And their standard is like awesome. And so that's why OCaml seems so appealing because OCaml really has potentially those two. Swift potentially also has those two. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. VLang, uh, yeah, VLang uh, it was trying to be this. VLang was trying to be it, but it, it does appear to be vaporware unless if I want to see some real, I want to see some big changes. You know what I mean? I want to see this. Uh, we'll be doing the fire. We'll be doing that next. Okay, there you go. This is awesome. I'm happy about Swift. I like it. The name is, I could be a Swiftogen. I could be. Okay. I have a future Swiftogen in me.